What's up, guys? I'm going to talk a little bit today about Ripley's match and how we try and simplify uh, a system that has become increasingly popular even at the high school level over the course of the last 10 years or so with, with spread offenses and how uh, guys who still want to be able to play uh, single high defense post-snap without – the disadvantages of man and true cover three, which in true cover three, those are the verticals and the seams um, and the horizontal stretches and then man such as crossing routes and rubs. Ripley's match is kind of a mixture of post world. Um, here at West Brother High School, we actually major in Ripley's match. We will do it out of both a two high and a one high predetermined um, Ripley's structure, but Ripley is basically telling you which safety is going to be down. So just for all intensive purposes of this particular look, I've drawn up just a 4-2 under front um, with the front and the two inside linebackers in blue and the five guys who've got to know how to play this coverage in red. And we'll draw it up to two by two and three by one. We'll talk about how we predetermine it um, out of one high uh, and too high, depending on the front that we play. So first of all, out of a too high structure, if you are a auto check cover three team, most of the time, if you have a four two five personnel or a three four personnel, I'm not talking about old school four three here. Uh, you're going to rotate your two safeties in our system. That's the the. I've got it drawn up as a strong safety and a free safety here, but your weak side safety is typically going to come down. So that's how I always remember it in Ripley's match is that we want to keep our nickel spur over here on the number two receiver. So obviously the corners are going to be matched up with number one and the spur will be matched up with number two. And the corner would have one weak and we should have a banjo on this back. So these strong safeties and these free safeties will rotate Rip and Liz based on whether or not there is a two weak or a three strong player. So in this particular look, we might show it a little bit earlier, but we're going to come down and this free safety is now in the match concept on number two weak and your strong safety in this particular look will move to the post. So, you know, those would be the same rules if you were playing cover one man free or if you were checking some type of cover three and you wanted to spin to a three week. Both of these, this coverage ensures that you can have an automatic six man uh, box against the run. Now, if we're trying to run this out of a cover two shell, um, you know, we would show some things as like the wheel being out here in the, in the apex zone or spike in the front or something to get a little bit better of a disguise. But post snap, you would get this particular picture with this kind of gap integrity with this front. Now, in terms of talking about Rip Liz match coverage, why does it benefit you? Well, number one, you're gonna carry verticals. So all of these guys, we basically take it a, a five yard threshold that if I get any type of vertical stem for three to five yards, it's gonna turn into man coverage. So fades, post, whatever, they're gonna fit like, um, they're gonna fit like man, okay? And anything out immediately, bubbles, shoot routes, whatever, we're gonna carry that flat. So out and up in match coverage, you will carry the guy. What you have is we have two basic in calls. One of them we call a China call, um, which I know most people think of China, they think of smash. We actually just call it corner is making the in call China. And that means that once he makes an in call, let's reset this, get some things off this board. If I get some type of distribution where I get a route, like a shallow cross route, that corner is immediately going to make a China call. And then he turns into a third corner. We already know in this look, this guy's going to the field and that guy can now snap off on that number one receiver coming in. Okay. 
so it just kind of turns into a cover three because most of the time what ends up happening on this if you get some type of shallow cross concept he will end up squeezing to the top of that and he can chase that now sometimes depending on game plan we might not chase that in cut it might just be a china to alert everybody that we're going to zone it off underneath it doesn't mean that we have to latch it on uh, when we make an in call though where we talk about what our um, Let's go to a route where the number two guy is running in right now on an immediate shallow. We are going to snap off on that. This guy, meaning the next guy, the mic has to hear in. So the corner uses China as their in call. The spur or the down safety makes a true in call, which tells the mic or the wheel they are now snapping off the first crosser underneath. So at this point, okay, I don't get a vertical, I don't get an out, I'm gonna settle, I'm gonna become a curl to flat player, just like I would in traditional cover three. He can snap off, his action will depend on the route he gets from number one. Okay, if so, you know, a lot of times if you get the same kind of concept where they run, you know, shallow with a dig behind it, he should be on top of that route because he got a vertical stem and the spur should be underneath it, okay? And in this particular look, the safety is still going to the middle of the field, uh, but you'll have that cover. You know, that right there is kind of the old, uh, in my opinion, a good Ripley is match beater, that route we just tore up. So if we just show up and we draw some routes here, uh, I think the easiest thing to do to always teach through it is to talk about just basic concepts. The first thing, you know, I think you have to talk about is the snag concept because uh, I think spread offenses have gotten really good at running uh, snag over the course of the last couple of years. And what I mean by that is not the insult anybody's intelligence. You get the 10 yard corner route and then you get the China, you know, the, the true snag and the end cut right here with a horizontal stretch coming from number three out of the backfield. So how this would look is if he, if this spur did not hear this China call right now, he would be on top of this corner. Uh, but that corner really should make an end, a China call right now, which now tells me, okay, I can now sink off of this. I'm playing cover three, so I should be underneath that. Once I hear the China call, I'm going to snap off. Whether or not we're going to snap off and man it or we're going to snap off and zone it, that spur is going to be there to collision this route, and that mic should be chasing uh, that to the flat right now. Now, against the team that's predominantly a snag team in our match, what we would probably do on China calls this week is just go ahead, okay, if you get an end cut, you go ahead and zone that thing off. So it turns into curl, China, 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 boom, zone it off, boom, zone it off. So he's going to play curl to flat. We should have the snag route right here, vice between now the mic and the sand. Now that call has to get all the way uh, to the mic backer in this particular look. So he'll start screaming it as well, China, China, China. He'll zone up in the curl and then he'll zone up in the hook and we'll rally to the flat. So on paper, it looks like just true cover three uh, defense, but it is sophisticated that if you were to get some type of double vertical concept, um, like, you know, two verts or whatever, that we would actually carry this. Remember this strong safety is going to the middle of the field where we would carry that and we would carry that. So, you know, it seems like to an offensive coach, it seems like, okay, God, they're in zone when we want them to be in man. They're in man when we want them to be in zone, whatever. So, you know, it still depends on route distribution. So, I mean, that's four verts. And that's, pardon me, that's four verts. And that would be, um, you know, how we would defend the snag. Other stuff, any type of, just remember, how are we going to snap off on the China call or not? That's the biggest thing from a game plan standpoint. And we can change it in the middle of games. Now to three by one, a couple of things that we do do. Uh, we played two teams that could really throw the football this year. 
um, out of spread stuff, you know, Kerry and, and Union Pines, who, who both had more yards against us than anybody, but we got them on both of this. So if you got to a true three by one set, the movement in this particular look to this, let's draw up a defense in black again. Our spur is still going to be on top of two, but now because we don't have a two week, we know that the movement of this defense is moving now on a Liz call in this particular look. We're going to treat it actually like three buzz. Some people come down and they'll put the spur in uh, on number three and the safety takes them on sky. This is how we would run our auto check system. Our three by one check in cover three uh, is actually a three buzz look where the spur, where the strong safety inserts strong and the spur takes the flat. Um, but you still play the same concepts where vertical and out, you're going to carry them. But we do have some things uh, where, you know, it's very much Nick Saban, where we lock this no matter what. And then we might make a clamp zone call right here on this particular look where we're playing sort of a combo coverage um, where we're not going to chase the out or the bubble. We're going to go ahead and shoot on it. And you're going to play, um, uh, you're going to play basically an IO concept with a cover three guy back here. You know, it, people call it mini to this side, but we're also in cover three uh, in Ripley's match in a, in a one high concept. So we can play this clamp call out of cover out of Ripley's match and as, as a mini call uh, where if you got something like that vertical, he would be on top of it. And then we can still play halves or whatever we want to play back week if we want to stay in a quarter's look. But the rotation is still going to be based on two week free safety down. If there's no two week, three strong, strong safety down and the other safety come off the middle of the field. So that's how we do it when we are a two high football team. Now, this year, this year's team morphed in, I think this is important in high school football, this team morphed into, obviously we're really good on defense, but we did have some personnel shortcomings in a sense that we really only had two safeties, two true safeties in our program. So we just, and one of them played tailback for us. So in a point to where I didn't want to keep those two on the field all the time, we became almost a single high football team. We played a lot less quarters uh, unless it was third and long um, or situations, you know, where we knew we had to have some extra run support week. Um, so, you know, we played pretty much a free safety in the middle of the field, probably about 85% of the year. And what we did this year to do that is we made our dog and our spur mirrored positions and our dog would be the true, the actual free safety in our typical base defense and how we build things first. So if I draw that same picture of the box is not going to change. You're still going to have the mic and the wheel inside. And then the, 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 uh, you know, the Oki 50 front, but that's still the six that are going to stay. I don't care that bandit, Jack, whatever you want to call them. We're still going to have that six, but what we did with this, instead of the predetermined rip Liz or excuse me, the rotational rip Liz match, we went ahead and put the free safety in the middle of the field the entire time. And we just made one guy our primary adjuster, and that was actually our spur this year. So you, you had almost an eight-man front concept where these two guys were true overhang players. But this spur, on he would play two week, three strong, and he was a heck of a football player. He signed to play uh, FCS football for us. So if they gave us some type of look where they went up there, we can now play that three by one clamp call with the dog and the spur as opposed to the spur and the free safety, as you saw in the quarters picture. Uh, but the mirrored image was is that guy just became uh, what we thought he could be. And we got the same picture, but we kept this one guy in the post and what that allowed us to do all year. Now we weren't able to disguise much and play a ton of quarters coverage um, but we would still do some things where we would show this 
and then on the snap, you know, we chase into some type of cover two, and this guy was um, doing his disguises and everything. We still had to protect our one high structure. So reminder on Ripley's match, you can do it out of a two high structure. Ripping Liz actually means rotating right and left. Uh, you're going to carry verticals and you're going to chase out routes, everything else that immediately comes in. You're going to pass off with China and in calls, have some games that you can play in three by one and make the offense wrong, make it think, you know, be in cover one when you want to be in cover one based on their route distribution and be in zone when you want to be in the zone. It was really good to us. We went from giving up 21 points a game um, our first year in 2018 to last year, setting the school record for points allowed, uh, five shutouts, and, you know, picked off 17 passes in the process because we didn't have to go wholly into the man-to-man -man world. Um, to, to get what we wanted, which was no access throws to the RPO stuff uh, and being able to shut down people on the perimeter. So hope you enjoyed this.